Welcome to Insights into Insurance with Tom Sorensen of Americana Insurance Group. All information provided is educational in nature and not intended to be acted upon without first consulting the appropriately licensed professional. Saturday morning on KATE, time for another episode of Insights into Insurance with Americana Insurance's Tom Sorensen and Tom before we get into the insurance-related topic for today, do you have a lot of farmers right now bringing in their crops still? Oh, yeah. Uh, right now, truthfully, it's been a very slow process for our farmers and a lot of corn out yet. Okay. Some guys, matter of fact, haven't even started yet. Um, they, they were getting done with their beans. I would say almost 100% of the guys are done with their beans, but corn, a lot of corn acres are out. Hopefully I've heard that this next week uh, weather is supposed to be good. So I haven't officially read it or anything like that, but I've been hearing it that that's what the case is there some concern at all that if, A, they can't get it into the weather, does that mean they have a claim then on crop insurance? Um, not necessarily. The crop insurance policy runs from uh, through December 10th. That's when their, their actually coverage ends. Okay, so if they still have crop out there on December 10th, which let's hope they don't, but then they would have to have an appraisal done. And then with that appraisal, they they could potentially have a claim with that depending on what the appraisal comes out or when they harvest in the spring so then the appraisal comes into effect now if they outproduce that appraisal then we use those numbers so and of course they should just seek their insurance agents if they do have questions about that because it yes. might not even apply to them yes now you know we got quite a ways to get to that point but let's just say if we ever did get to that point yeah i would guess my phone would be ringing off the hook of saying what, what do i do here you know if they got full of you know if it's snow and and they can't get get it harvested so you think 91 maybe was a prime example of that 91 probably was yeah yeah um i i actually wasn't quite in the business at that time so but i'm guessing that that was probably concern uh, especially harvesting in that now I don't remember, to be honest with you, how uh, 91 was a bad year in itself because we had, it was really, really wet in that, uh, in 91, but, uh, and federal crop insurance didn't take off really until right around that time. So in 91, there might not have been a lot of federal crop insurance uh, policies out there. All right. Uh, now, Tom, we don't have an emailed question this week. Well, we did. Nope. But we didn't. So we're kind of shooting from the hip. We had a cancellation last minute. so Yeah, and uh, we will get to that topic, which is going to be about protection classes uh, for the fire departments. But the last-minute deal with the with – the fire department with Mark uh, Light, with the the captain of the fire. It, obviously, their schedules can be always might, changing. Right? right, right, yeah. You know, so so we're gonna actually kind of do a uh, topic uh, along with fire a little bit here. And uh, I brought in this. Uh, I had Frames R Us frame this up, so it's kind of a keepsake. Uh, what do I want to say? Framed sentimental thing here of American fire marks is what they are. And yeah, and I was I was about to bring that up, the item that you brought into studio today. I'll have you describe it to the listeners just because of course they can't see it. Right. Well, yeah, you we gotta pretty much describe it on the radio, right? Just like uh <laughs> just like uh if it was on TV I could show you, but I got a face for radio, so that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what they are is they're little black plaques almost, but they're metal. They're about as uh, big as a uh, baseball, I suppose, maybe a little bit bigger than that as far as the... the three, three and a half inches. Yeah, the diameter. So that's that's what they look like. They're flat on, on the one side and then have a little protrusion on the front side. So they're, they're American fire markers or marks for yep. some people. Yep. What were they used for originally? Yeah, this is great. Originally, well, first of all, the British were the ones that uh, originally started this sometime in the year of about 1710 and then uh, beginning in the 1750s some American insurance companies issued metal fire marks to their policyholders. 
So right around Benjamin Franklin time. Okay. Yeah. So. And why why would insurance companies give someone this piece of metal? Yeah, they would place them. So let's just say, Paul, you bought a, a uh, policy through uh, oh Fireman's Fund or something like that because they go back that far. Um, they would give you this plaque and or this fire mark and you can pl- would place it on the exterior of your house or if you owned a business okay they would put it on the exterior of your business what it was originally intended to is discourage malicious arson really yeah so by showing that the owner would not suffer greatly if their building was destroyed by fire so so somebody lit a match and put some you know in fire i guess maybe that was a big issue back then i I guess uh, uh, you know and so what that would do is say well i don't want to do it to this place because they're gonna get they're gonna get money back and rebuild so that was one of the reasons Okay, uh, you said that was one of the reasons. Right. What's another reason? Well, additionally, the the mark stood as a guarantee to fire brigades that the insurance company, which insured the house in question or business, would reward the brigade or the fire department, whatever you want to call it. Back then, they call them brigades, uh, handsomely uh, to extinguish the blaze on the premises as some fire insurers would contribute money to these departments and award bonuses to the first fire engine arriving at the scene of a fire. Okay, so basically it was like a race to get there because you would get rewarded handsomely from the fire ins- or from the insurance companies because of you're the first one there. So I'm, I'm thinking right now, just off of that, what would stop a fire person yep. from lighting a fire on one of these insured businesses and then being the first one there to not oh, only... Oh, boy, now you're talking... Uh, boy, you're talking way out of uh, what I never even thought of. See, you got that evil mind, Paul. <laughs> well, I guess that was the first thing I... <laughs> when you said that, I go, okay, what's going to stop... It? Well, I'm right. not saying they're all on the level, no, but I what don't... would stop that from someone? That, that's a good. A cash-strapped fire department. I... Hey, let's. this is insured. I'll yeah, tell you what. Right. Boys sit around the corner. I'm going to light a match. <laughs> and then... You know, I never thought of that, but... Uh, early uh, insurance fraud. Yeah, could have been early insurance fraud fraud absolutely yeah yeah i never thought of that but leave it up to you paul (laughs) shay you would think of that uh so but uh the other thing that uh that those fire marks were was it was a really early uh way of advertising okay so you know let's just say you had four houses in a row and three of them americano right exactly uh it would be you know three of them were with philadelphia fire insurance and the other ones with fireman's fund well you know what somebody would say oh look it there's three of my neighbors got philadelphia i should probably check into them now, why did we go away from the fire marker then? Because you'd think we'd still have them today. It, uh, the demise of the U.S. fire mark or the American fire mark was sometime right around 1890 and was probably associated with the advancement of technology. Companies were able to advertise more effectively and more cheaply than by producing fire marks, so they stopped doing that. So, so that's why we don't see fire marks today. That's why we don't see fire marks today, except for you can still see some. Like if you go to the old uh, town of Philadelphia, and that there's still there's still some on the old buildings there that uh, show that. So where'd you get yours then? I actually got my fire marks from a wonderful. A uh, client of mine, and I hope she doesn't mind that I use her name, but I don't think she will. And it's Connie Conestead here of Elbert Lee. And she uh, worked for an agency at one time, and her boss gave her these, and she had them, and she was telling me about them. And, and she goes, do you want them? And I said, do I want them? Of course, I would love to have them. But, you know, how much do you want for them, Connie? And she said, I don't need anything. And I said, I tell you what, if you give them to me, I promise you I'm going to put them in a really nice framed thing. And, and so what I do, have done, is, as you can see, I've put them in this frame. I put the names of the fire departments underneath each fire mark. And then I've printed out a story about what 
are the American fire marks. So if anybody would like to see it, it's going to be in my it's in my office. All right, perfect. Uh, Tom, we'll take a break and then we'll have a, a few minutes of rapid fire. And uh, I'll, I might even turn it over because you never really never see this man on the weekend. So we might have to put him to work. You know, I can't wait. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more insights into insurance. Is on your side. You have a side that is retired, playing tag and getting tired. A side that owns your own store. Looks like you need to explain some more. That's why there's a nationwide. They help protect and grow your many sides. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. For all your many sides, there's Nationwide. Call Americana Insurance Group and Albert Lee and Wells today. Back here on Insights to Insurance with Americana Insurance is Tom Sorensen. And Tom, I mentioned the word work, and he's already gone. So we'll just... Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. Mike White is leaving us. So instead, uh, I will do just a few questions kind of off the top of the head, because I know Mike was asking some questions earlier this week. Let's talk about small business, I guess home-based businesses, not yep. necessarily small businesses. Yep. And there seems to be an emerging trend if they want to hold some sort of party or something right. like that in um, a place other than their home, right? Right. And I think where Mike was coming from was, as has the, the Freeborn County Fair director, they have these booths that they have at the fair. And he was wanting to know, hey, what should I be asking for? Because these booths or these people that come to the fair let's just i'm just gonna say mary Kay. yeah okay home-based business okay he's wondering well i need to get liability make sure that they have liability coverage and and sometimes those home-based businesses can be uh what do i want to say um not looked upon as by the owners or whatever of saying, oh, I need to get coverage for this for liability because it is, they are excluded for coverage on your homeowners. Okay. But you can normally, a lot of times those small home-based business get a, an endorsement to your homeowners to have that coverage. Okay. So that's what I would say. And then also too, you can get an, usually an endorsement to the homeowners to cover your inventory okay i mean those mary Kay girls they got a lot of inventory a lot of dollars there so again those those items are usually excluded or there's a limitation to that on the policy so they need to make sure that they have that coverage normally it goes off of gross receipts okay now if you get to the point where you're doing a ton of gross receipts then they might say uh you can't endorse it on the homeowner's policy you might need to get a commercial policy and if you're doing that much out of your home, I mean, you must right. have a pretty big home if you've Absolutely. got that many receipts coming through. Absolutely, yes. And the issue is a lot of times is the is the away from premises, but also, too, if people show up to your premise and you don't have this coverage, uh, it's excluded for coverage. All right. So uh, we've got about a minute left, yep. so I'll ask a, a little bit more of a probably yes or no question. I know it's tr not as black and white with insurance, mm. and they should always see their Never. insurance agent. Uh, black and white uh, in insurance is always gray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, winter's coming, all right. Yep. We've had our first dose of winter weather. Uh, postman delivering mail. A lot of yes. people have uh, yes. the mailbox by their house. Uh, slips, falls, breaks yep. their ankle or foot. Uh, right. Because of that, are right. you liable as the homeowner? You could be. Okay. Uh, first of all, right away would probably fall under medical insurance coverage on your policy where I always recommend like a five to $6,000 medical coverage because most people have a high deductible, okay, on their health insurance. So I always look at it as that's your good friend coverage because what's let's say it's not your postman, it's just a friend that comes over and, and falls and, and all of a sudden he's got a $6,000 bill or a $6,000 amount of billing that he can't cover because he's got a deductible. Well, your homeowner's insurance can cover that, okay? So that's one way. But now let's say they try to come and sue you. Sure. Because of negligence. You did something didn't that shovel. didn't shovel or something like that. You were negligent to that. Then that's where your liability would come into play. Okay, so, and uh, hopefully you have enough liability coverage to be able to cover any, uh, any uh, reward that that person would potentially be awarded. 
All right, uh, Tom, we are out of time, but if people have questions, because we want to answer their questions during Insights into Insurance, right. how do they get a hold of you? It's uh, 507-377-2000 for the phone, or they can email me at insights at com, or our website is americanainsurance.com. And one last thing, Paul, tonight, uh, we fall back. We do. Yeah. We fall back uh, with our clocks, which means check your smoke detectors, right? Yes. Batteries yeah. in the smoke detectors. Batteries in the smoke detectors. So please uh, check that because we want you all safe. Perfect. Uh, thanks so much, Tom. We'll talk again next week. Thanks, Paul. You've been listening to Insights into Insurance from Americana Insurance Group. All information provided is intended to be educational in nature. Before acting upon any information obtained during the Insights into Insurance radio show broadcast, consult an appropriately licensed professional.